السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions, may Allah bless them and bless every one of us and grant us Jannatul Firdaus. My beloved brothers and sisters in this beautiful masjid in Bosmont, here the third taraweeh of the month of Ramadan, 1440, 2019. It is indeed a blessed night, but at the same time, for me, it brings about sadness to be missing one of the scholars and the imams of this masjid who happened to serve here for many years. And it would be wrong for me not to commence with a dua for him. May Allah grant Imam Malik forgiveness and Jannatul Firdaus. He was in our midst. He was a beacon of light. He worked very hard. He did a lot of good work. He may have shortcomings as a human being, just like we all do. I'm confident about the forgiveness of Allah. May Allah forgive him and forgive every one of us. But the question I have is, we know how he led his life. What about us? How are we leading ours? We know what he did in his life. He was with us and suddenly he fell ill. And suddenly in no time, he passed away. I happened to speak to him earlier and I was confident that he would gain shifa. And he did gain shifa and cure. He was cured in a way that Allah wanted. He was cured in a way that his soul departed the body. And he went into a life that has no end. That was the cure Allah chose. It may not be the cure within this worldly life that you and I know. When you say, oh Allah grant me cure, Allah can take you away. That could be your cure. Subhanallah. We don't look at it that way. When we say, may Allah have mercy on you, the mercy could be that you be taken away before matters become worse for you. When we say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best, sometimes the best is that we leave this world. But like I said, the question screams for an answer from every one of us. We knew how he led his life. He was here most of the time. And every time we saw his face, he was a person who tried to help. He was a person who tried to resolve matters. He was called to the homes to resolve disputes. That's how he led his life. What about us? What have you done, my brothers, my sisters? If you were to suddenly be diagnosed with a terminal sickness and illness, may Allah not do that to us. And whomever that has happened to, may Allah grant you shifa. Amen. But if that were to happen, and you were only given a very, very short time, you would realize all my money means nothing. All my power, my looks, my clothes, my car, my watches, my phones, everything means nothing. Think for a moment if you were told by the doctor, who's not even Allah, it's just a doctor. The doctor tries through his own findings, but he knows that perhaps the Almighty can give you a longer life. How many doctors have actually said you have a week to live and you live for a whole 20 years? But if the doctor were to tell you, listen, you've only got a very short space of time. It is now stage four and you've got very little that you could do. I suggest you just go home and you start taking your painkillers and prepare to meet with Allah. Think for a moment if that were told to you. May Allah not do that to us. It is a blessing of Allah. It is a gift of Allah if you are told that. Do you know why? You are better than the one who dies suddenly without being able to say goodbye to his family, without being able to prepare to the, for the meeting with his maker, without being able to make peace with Allah. We've committed sin upon sin. We are embarrassed about how we've been leading our lives. So if you are told you've got a terminal illness, it is the biggest possible gift of Allah that you could have. Do you know that? It's better than giving you a billion dollars because that billion, you're going to leave it on earth. But when you're told of a terminal illness, if you have Iman, the softening of your heart would actually take you through to Jannatul Firdaus. Are you following what I'm saying? You have a chance to soften your heart, to say sorry to those you've hurt. To forgive 
to round up, to wind up, to close shop, to be able to see your kids through, etc. To give them the last parting words of advice. Subhanallah. What a blessing of Allah. When we are diagnosed, we become depressed. But Allah says, my worshiper, imagine I took you in a sudden car crash with alcohol in the car, with a girlfriend on the left, and who knows what else you might and might not have done. And you went suddenly. What would have happened to you? So we loved you enough to let you know that you know what? Watch out. You're coming back to us. Allahu Akbar. I dedicate this evening to those who have terminal illnesses and sicknesses. My brothers and sisters, this evening we heard a verse. Kullu nafsin maut. Every soul shall taste death. The word used is to taste because death has a taste. You have to go through it and myself as well, just like the others have gone through it, my beloved brothers and sisters. So what do we do? We have to taste death. The Prophet ﷺ says, Akthiru dhikra that. Increase the remembrance of that one thing that will destroy your wrong lusts and desires. What is it? Death. A true mu'min should never get up in the morning being confident that they will still be alive at night. And they should never recline in bed being confident that they're going to get up in the morning. No, if you're a true mu'min, when you get up in the morning, you should say, Oh Allah, I don't know if you're going to allow me to see the evening. And when you're going to recline, you read the dua, Bismika Allahumma wa ba'tu jambi wa bika arfa'uha in amsakta nafsi faghfir laha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bi hifdika alladhi tahfadhu bihi ibadaka salihin. It is in your name, Allah, that I put my side to recline. I put my side to recline, to go to sleep. I am reclining in my bed. And it is with your name, O oh Allah, that I will get up in the morning if you have given me that life. If you have taken my soul away, then forgive it. Every evening that's a dua, the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. Oh Allah, if you have taken my soul in my sleep, forgive it. And if you have granted it return for a short while back into this earth, then protect it the same way you protect those who are your pious slaves and worshippers. What a beautiful dua. So that is a believer. It is not wrong to think perhaps I might go today. It will help you to prepare. It will help you to quickly say a few shahadas. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Keep it on your tongue. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man kana akhiru kalamihi min dunya la ilaha illallah. Dakhal al jannata. Whoever's last words and speech as they exit this world happens to be that statement of worshipping Allah alone. La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. He will enter Jannah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my brothers and sisters, when Allah has kept you in a condition where you are told that you are terminally ill or you are sick, I want to tell you, you have no option but to be hopeful in the mercy of Allah. We live with hope. We know He will cure us. We have that conviction that Allah will cure us. Allah will cure you. And we have the conviction that Allah's mercy is upon us. I've met so many brothers and sisters. They've been diagnosed an illness. They are told, you know what? Terminal sickness. If you're told terminal sickness, there are so many who've come back and suddenly they are free from the sickness. Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't He cure? Isn't He the owner of miracles? Can He not do things that you and I would never have imagined? That is Allah. Allah creates from nothing for Him to cure is nothing. But when He knows, and this is one thing I want to teach you tonight, and I want to remind myself about it. As a believer, whatever Allah does for you and to you is always the best thing that could have ever happened to you if only you know how to take it in your stride. And if only you're a good person, you lost your job, there's nothing better than that. You might wonder, hey, hey, I don't know if this guy knows what he's talking about. 
It's a fact. I've said it in the past. And I've done a little bit of a survey by asking people here and there. Lost a job, applied for one, didn't get it. Applied for a second one, didn't get it. Applied for a third one, didn't get it. Some gave up, so they lost. But Allah didn't tell you to give up. Notice, your loss is only because you gave up. Not because Allah gave up. Allah never ever gives up. You and I give up because why? We become despondent. But then I know of people, fourth job still didn't get it. Fifth job still didn't get it. Then they started their own business, which was now the sixth idea, which grew bigger than all of those six that they were going to go to work for. Wasn't that the mercy of Allah? Allah wanted you to become a boss bigger than all of those bosses whom you were going to work for. Allah, so you knocked on this door, Allah says, come back. And you're upset, Allah says, but we've got a plan for you. Don't you believe in us? Your job is to keep trying. The problem with us is we stop trying. We lose hope. We say, Allah, I'm making dua. I'm calling out to you. I'm supplicating one after the other. But ya Allah, you are not listening. You are not responding. Allah says, don't insult me. Yustajabu li ahadikum ma lam yastajil. Allah says, you will all be answered for as long as you don't insult, for as long as you don't make haste. The Sahaba says, what is the meaning of isti'jal? This making haste that you're talking about, the insulting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu says, an yaqula ahadukum da'awtu da'awtu falam yustajab li. When one of you says, I made so much dua, 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 but Allah is just not answering. Allah says, how could you say that? My worshiper, don't you trust me? My worshiper, don't you know that I know what is better for you? You know, if you were going to get that job you wanted in Pretoria, perhaps your drive from here to there would result one day in an accident where your limbs would be broken. We didn't allow you to get the job in the first place, but you don't know what we did for you. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us protection, all of us who travel. No one knows. You don't know what the future holds. Make the most of what you have. You have a plate of food in front of you. Learn to cut your spending in order to tailor make it to the, your income. You need to budget in Islam. Budget meaning don't be shy to downgrade your life. You don't have to flash the latest of this and that. It's okay if your clothing has a few patches here and there. It was a sunnah at the time when they didn't have that they had patches. But when they had, mashallah, they wore clothing, subhanallah, with thousands of dirhams and dinars. But the problem with us, we want to live up to the Joneses. We want to show off, I've got a Rolex. You didn't tell them it's fake, but you know it's a Rolex. <laughs> and I've got this other thing here, and I've got the latest of this and the latest... Who are you showing? It needs one visit to the doctor where you're given bad news for you to realize. Rolex, forget about it. I'm not even rolling. Subhanallah. <laughs> really, it's a fact. We lose. Just turn to Allah. That's why Allah says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Amazing verse. Allah says, you want to know better than everything that you collect and amass, better than your wealth, your watches, your phones, your whatever else, your houses and the things that are so cozy and comfortable to you and your food that you so much love and everything else that you absolutely adore better than all of that is simply the virtue and the mercy of Allah. If Allah has mercy on you, Trust me, there is nothing more valuable than the mercy of Allah. That is why, my brothers and sisters, the most beloved unto Allah was the messenger, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But he was not known as a wealthy man who ran behind this world. In fact, he was born an orphan. He grew up and he was looked at as an honest person. But when he came with the message, they really made his life difficult. He lost his children when they were in their infancy. Most of them, all his boys were gone and his girls. Girls, he lost them when he, they were in their adulthood. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy meant that your children were not going to die, his will be, would, would have been the first ones that wouldn't have died. But when Allah loves you, he's going to show you, I'm going to take your child away in your life. Do you know why? 
what you go through when your child is taken away in your life is something that nobody can ever understand or help you with unless it has happened to them. May Allah make it easy upon those who've lost their children. A consolation for those who are orphans is that when Allah chose for the most beloved, He chose for him to be an orphan. It's a sign that Allah loves you, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. A consolation for those who've lost their children, just as I have said. A consolation for those who are persecuted in society and community. Those who are looked down upon, people harassing you, spreading rumor about you, calling you names, falsely accusing you. It is a clear, direct sign of the love of Allah for you. If only you are content, what are they going to do? The insults of the one who wants to be abusive will never harm you. It is Allah alone who is the controller of benefit and harm. The praise of those who want to praise you when you have money, authority, a high level of this and that and good looks. Or maybe it's just the makeup that you know how to use. Still, if that is the case and they praise you, remember the praise will never help you. It is only Allah who will help you. Praise of humankind is fake. It is fake. It makes you feel good for a moment. You need to go back and tell yourself, did this thing make my head swell? If it did, it was the devil. Because the true connection with Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as much as they sang in his praise, it was to their benefit, not to his. He knew who he was. All of us know, in his case, he was sinless and spotless and perfect. In our case, we are so sinful. How would praise make you feel like a big deal when you know what muck you are in? May Allah forgive us. This is why we say, be happy with the decree of Allah. There is nothing that can ever happen that is bad for a mu'min for as long as he or she has the conviction in Allah, the faith in Allah. Faith keeps you going. Without your faith, you have nowhere to turn. Nothing. Without faith, when something bad happens to you, you are cursing your boss and your job. When you have faith, the boss tells you something oppressive and you have been wronged. You can actually smile and say, my Lord is in charge. وَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوِ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ You need to know that if the entire nation gets together in order to assist you with a small thing, they will never be able to help you with anything unless Allah has written that that is supposed to have come to you. وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَةِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّةِ الصُّحُفُ The Prophet ﷺ says, if the whole ummah, the whole world, the whole, all the nations get together in order to harm you in one way or another, they will never ever be able to harm you unless Allah has written it against you because at the moment the pens have been lifted and the pages are dry, your destiny is written. Subhanallah. Work for Allah. Allah loves you. Feel the love of Allah in your challenges, in your sickness. I was saying the one who is sick have hope in the mercy of Allah. So hopeful that I'm going to be cured. And so hopeful that if I die, I die with a smile. I know Allah will forgive me. Look at the magicians at the time of the Pharaoh. They made one sajda and Allah gave them Jannah. How many sajdas have you and I made? May Allah accept at least one of them. Have hope in Allah. Those were people who made one sujood. They were executed by the Pharaoh thereafter. Allah says, we forgave them and gave them Jannah. You and I, today, tonight, we made more sujood than theirs. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. Your Lord has not created you to punish you. But you need to develop a relationship with Him. Believe in the mercy of Allah. Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. Allah says, I will treat each worshipper of mine the way he thinks I'm going to treat him. Amazing. When you think Allah's going to punish me for this, punish me for that, you are insulting Allah. Because Allah says, once you have asked for my forgiveness, that sin is wiped out if you were genuine. Forget about it. Don't doubt my mercy. I am the most merciful. I told you that at the beginning. Bismillah. Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. 
رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الودود الغفار التواب I've told you my names my qualities why don't you believe in these names and these qualities these are supposed to be there in order to encourage you to turn to Allah not to become frightened of Allah We love Allah so much that the fear we have in us is the fear to insult him, to make him angry, to make him upset. That is the fear. I'm not scared of Allah. I'm scared of the punishment of Allah. But for Allah, I love him. I love him so much that when we say the fear of Allah, we're actually referring to the fear of the punishment of Allah. But for Allah, I love him. And Allah loves me. That's why I'm here. That's why I was able to create or that's why I was able to actually fulfill one sajda because Allah created me and he knows Allah loves me enough to allow me to be from among those who worships him alone. Isn't that a sign of love? You are in the house of who here? Please tell me. The house of who? If you were not chosen by Allah, you would not be here. Subhanallah. You are a VIP. You are a VIP. Why? You are in the house of the owner of your life and mine. Subhanallah. Imagine going into the house of a big man. Think about whoever you want, a big person you dream of looking at, meaning going to visit in their home and they welcome you. Subhanallah. This is the house of Allah. A billion times bigger than that, you are chosen by Allah to be here. That's why Allah says on the day of judgment, we will give a special shade to certain types of people. One of them is he whose heart is always in the masjid. When they enter the masjid, they don't want to get out of there. Now I want to just help ourselves, correct ourselves a little bit here. When we come in the masjid, we look at the clock so much that we can't wait to get out, especially last night when the score was 4-0. <laughs> you see, you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Allah make it easy. One brother says, but Sheikh, it's okay because there's Muslims in the team. I said, that's... It's irrelevant. You're running away from Allah. And then the one youngster came and said, we won because it was Ramadan and we made dua. And I'm like, gosh, is there anything else you wanted to make dua for? May Allah bless us. When you come in the house of Allah, we should be relaxed here. Beautiful, lovely, absolutely amazing. Be calm. Don't want to rush out. Take your time. Because why? The house of Allah. Rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakum bil masajid. A man whose heart is hanging in the masjid. He wants to go back there again and again. When you go in the masjid, you don't want to come out in a rush. You come out because you have to come out. Now you've got to go home. You've got to have your meal and so on and so forth and so on. The same applies to Quran. When we are listening to the Quran. When we are reading the Quran, the word of Allah. If you pick up the Quran and you cannot wait to close it, you need help. But if you pick up the Quran and you finish what you had to finish, and sometimes you might even go a little bit more, you're heading in the right direction. MashaAllah. Let's develop this. I was saying if you have hope in the mercy of Allah, you die with a smile. On your deathbed, when you are suffering the pangs of death, when it's the most difficult time because whatever illness you may have had or the heart attack or whatever else might have come in your direction, you still know Allah promised me forgiveness. I'm dying with a smile. I'm going back to Rabbun, Raufun, Ghafurun, Rahmanun, Rahimun, Tawabun, Ghaffarun, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. How can you ever lose hope even on your deathbed? Death is a door. Everyone is going to go through it. And you know what? The Prophet Muhammad speaks about the gift of a believer. What do you think the gift of a believer is? The gift of a believer. What is it? Did you lead your life with two main characteristics? What are these two? Worship Allah and respect the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. That's all. <coughs> Two things you need to do in your life. Serve Allah and that service of Allah should lead you to serve the rest of the creatures of Allah even if they be animals. Did you hear what I just said? Didn't you hear of the narration of a person who was kind to a dog so he got forgiveness and so on? 
There are so many other narrations like that. To prove to you Allah loves it when you understand who He is. Who is He? He is the one who gave life to He who you hate. Did you hear what I just said? He who you disagree with completely, the giver of that life was Allah. The same Allah who gave you your life. Nothing makes you more. Nothing makes you more entitled to the life than that person. The entitlement is the same. So, alhamdulillah. So to be honest, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. And when we ask it, be convinced. When you make dua to Allah, be convinced. Call out to Allah in a beautiful way, with conviction. Don't say, ah, I don't know what Allah is going to do. Allah will forgive. Allah has forgiven. And Allah shall forgive. That is Allah's job. He will do it. That's why Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Allah is addressing the sinful people. Those who have committed sin upon sin, they have wronged themselves in a big way. Allah tells His Messenger Muhammad to tell those people, don't you dare lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Why? Allah will forgive all your sins. It only requires you to turn to Him. Did you turn? If the answer is yes, forget about it, your sins are wiped out. Carry on. But with us, you see, shaitan has a trap. What's his trap? He makes you commit the sin initially because he makes you belittle within yourself through human nature or whatever else, the standing of Allah. You forget the status of Allah for a moment. You commit a sin. Thereafter, shaitan is excited. But shaitan can have kept you on that wrong path for 20, 50, 70 years. It requires, Allah says, one moment will wipe it out. 70 years gone. Allah requires one moment, a moment of truth. That's all. <coughs> but shaitan's trap is after you seek forgiveness, he comes back to you. He comes back to you. And what does he make you do? He makes you insult Allah in a bigger way than the original sin. Do you want to know how? A man committed adultery. That was a sin between him and Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our families and the ummah and humanity at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection and sound morals and values. I mean, my brothers and sisters, thereafter, he seeks forgiveness. Allah says, you sought forgiveness, I wiped it out. Shaitan is upset. Shaitan comes back to this man and says, you know what? Allah is not as merciful as you think he is. He still hasn't forgiven you, not you. What do you imagine what you did? How could you have done that? What did shaitan do? He's now making you insult Allah. The first sin was a sin that was committed. The second one, you haven't even recognized who your maker is. You are now thinking when Allah says, don't lose hope, you say, but I'm losing hope. You're going against the verse of Allah, the instruction of Allah. How dare you have the courage or the deviation to go against what Allah is telling you in terms of His mercy? How? Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. That is a trap of the devil. When you have sought forgiveness, the sin is gone over, wiped out. Four conditions need to be met. What are they? Admit your fault within yourself between you and Allah. We don't go to human beings and confess. There's nothing like that in Islam. We go to Allah and confess. The darkness of the night or any time. Admit your sin, regret it, seek the forgiveness of Allah and promise Him you're not going to do it again. At that moment, if you really promised Allah, you were not going to do it again. And for some reason, some way down the line, disconnected to what you had promised Allah initially, you happen to repeat the same sin at some stage later. Go and repeat the same process again later. Allah deals with the two separately. Remember this. Remember this. You need to know it. Why I say you need to know it? My brothers and sisters, faith is there to give you hope. The quality of your life will improve. Your lifespan will not change. Allah has decided that. But the quality of that life will improve with faith, with discipline, with morals, with values. The quality of your life improves. I've got a beautiful life. Why? Because I'm disciplined. The minute you're not disciplined and it's all about this and that and sinning and whatever else, you'll find out what will happen to you. May Allah forgive us. So those who have illness and sickness amongst us, wherever you are across the globe, have hope in the mercy of Allah. 
Prepare for the meeting with Allah. Make peace with people around you. Make peace with your family members. Sort out your affairs. You are lucky. You are fortunate. At least you've been told one of two good things can happen to you. One is you might get a cure, the dunya type of cure, the cure that we talk about in this worldly life, which means no more sickness. I went to check. Guess what? Remission. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that cure. But otherwise... There is another gift, another good thing that can happen to you. What is it? You can go back to Allah. Can't you? You have to go anyway. If not today, then tomorrow. Not tomorrow, then the next day. You have to drop at some point. It's not going to carry on. People before you have gone, you have to go. Subhanallah. We're going to go meet with Allah. I tried. I read my salah as best as I could. I sought forgiveness. Seeking forgiveness is probably the best thing you could ever do in your life. Do you know that? Keep seeking forgiveness every day. Oh Allah, I'm weak. I want to tell you something that's come to my mind again. <coughs> Consolation. All of us have sinned. What's the difference between the sins we commit and the sins that those people who don't even believe commit, I tell you. When we've committed a sin, it's never ever in defiance of Allah. It's always due to human weakness. But we know deep down what I did is wrong. Oh Allah, forgive me. Why? Human weakness made you sin. I didn't defy Allah. The one who defies Allah is not a believer. Every sin we who, have, who are seated here or who are listening to this, every sin that we've committed, it's out of human weakness. Allah says, seek forgiveness. Wipe it out. I know you're not insulting me actually. You're not belittling me. You're not defying me. It's not like Allah said alcohol is haram. So a man comes and says, what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm drinking it. Show me. No one does that, a'udhu billah. Not a single person does that. You see? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So that gift I was talking about, the Prophet ﷺ says, a mu'min has a gift. What's the gift? Guess what it is. What do you think it is? You might say jannah, right? Paradise. You might say some contentment. You might say something else. The Prophet ﷺ says, the gift of a believer is death. Subhanallah. Death. Aren't we surprised? How death? How is death a gift? I tell you what. You want paradise, don't you? To get there, you have to die. Subhanallah. We want paradise and we don't want to die. Allah says, what kind is this? Subhanallah. If I ask you today, who wants Jannah? Hey, we'll put up two hands, inshallah. Don't worry, you'll have two Jannahs. And then if I say, who wants to die? The guys are like, hey, not yet. You know, I, still, I was still looking at that Ferrari down the road there. You know? I, I, I was still thinking, perhaps I'll get that job. The guys offered me this. Hey, my missus is young. What's going to happen to her if I die? Hey, shucks, I can't imagine. Oh, Allah, keep me alive. Oh, Allah says, don't worry, man. There are women prettier than her who were taken by your friends. Allahu Akbar! May Allah grant us ease. Why are you worried about what's going to happen to your family when there are others whose families were sometimes looked after better than you could if you were alive? Has it not happened? Yes, Allah will take care of them. Everything that is moving on earth Allah promises that He will sustain it. I will look after it. I'll provide for it. What it needs, I will give it. The ants that might be around here, that we can't even see, who provides for those ants? Allah. If Allah knows the ants that are around here, do you really think He doesn't know you and I are here? If Allah provides for the mosquitoes, do you really think that He's not going to provide for you and I? And by the way, the provision of some of those mosquitoes might be your blood because it's sweet, subhanallah. But Allah knows what is written. Allah knows it. And Allah says, don't worry, we wrote it, man. Please, the next time you see a mosquito on yourself, don't just say, all right, your sustenance written, no problem. You can carry on, you know. You can still, mashallah, attack it. You are allowed to. May Allah forgive us. So the hope that we have shall lead us to that gift, which is death with a smile. The day you are not well, and it will happen to all of us. If Allah gives you a life, your knees begin to pain, your back begins to pain, 
you cannot stand anymore, you're sitting, then you have to lie down, then you're in bed. Always have hope in the mercy of Allah. Remember my words, I promise you. Mark what I'm saying. Even if you're going, think about the good things you've done and say, Oh Allah, I did do a few good things, just look at them. If you could forgive a man who gave water to a dog, I gave zamzam to a human being. Allahu Akbar, I'm telling you honestly. I, tell Allah that. You've done good, I've done good, all of us have done good. But the problem is the bad has, has a weight on our shoulders because we haven't actually shrugged it off in the proper way. Take it out, wipe it out. It won't help you. Like I said, the day you realize what is of true value is the day. The day that you realize what is of true value is the day that you know I'm going to go soon. Then you start thinking, hey, all this, what is it of? What is it about? I love this, I love that, I love, I love my jacket. Hey, take it out and give it away. Take this out and give it away. Take that out and give it away. And see how you feel. Allah says you won't achieve righteousness until you spend from that which you love. Subhanallah. And another factor, your time. Your time. Time is a creature of Allah. Allah put us into it. Use it wisely. Very wisely. Especially with your family. A lot of us have a problem. We don't spend time with our family. You want the mercy of Allah? Think, why did Allah give me family? So that I would just lead a life separately from them? No. Spend time with them. And Allah will open your doors. The doors of mercy. By the way, this is the month of Ramadan. It's the month of mercy. The month of forgiveness. The month of happiness. The month of joy. The month of celebration towards the end. The month of, subhanallah, excessive acts of worship. That is the month. So introspect and correct yourself and reflect within you and reach out to others because it is also the month of compassion. You want to earn the pleasure of Allah. You need to reach out to others who are struggling. Allah will help you by the will of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. May Allah have mercy upon our Imam, Imam Malik and upon all the marhumin of the ummah. And may Allah have mercy on us the day he takes us away. May our graves be filled with the nur of Iman. And may our graves be filled with that which is good. And may all our sins be wiped out the day when we meet with Allah. May we be from among those who are happy, happily achieving the intercession of the most beloved Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.